right. Well, Eric will join us when he can. And so I guess we'll get started. Are you ready, Heather? I'm ready. All right, welcome everybody. This is the November 28th, 2021 as to spark our three Board of Education regular meeting. It is now 615 and this meeting is called to order. Heather, please conduct our board roll call. Mr. Adams? Mrs. Cabrera? Here. Mrs. Case? Here. Mr. Kushner? Here. Mrs. Wolf? Here. All right, I'd like to move on to the approval of the agenda. You'll have an agenda before you. At this time, I'll take any comments, changes, or amendments to the current agenda. Seeing none, we'll move forward with the agenda as presented. Public comments, nobody signed up for public comments. Moving on to our first order of business, special presentations, agenda item 2.1, Youth in Action. I'll let Ms. Weaver introduce the students or if they want to introduce themselves and get started. Uh, this is a great program that started two or three years ago and do a lot of stuff in the community as well as for our school. So I'm um, very excited to have them here. So. Hi, um, I'm Marsha Weaver and um, there's a group of kids. Um, they're kind of spread out. Some are at home and some are here at the school. And um, I'm going to let them introduce themselves. And then I'm hoping, Heather, I did this right and that I will be able to share. They have some pictures. Yes, you can you share your screen. Okay, and so I'll let them introduce themselves and then I'll um, kind of get started with the um, pictures. Okay, so hi, my name is Mia Weaver. And I'm Sam. Uh, we're currently working for the county and one of our roles is helping Marsha run Youth in Action here at the high school. I'm Bailey. Um, I'm a senior in high school, and I've been in Youth in Action for my entire high school career. This year, I, was, I worked on a big crossroads project, which I think we're going to talk further into later on. Uh, my name is Alec Throne, and I've been in Youth in Action for a couple years now. I'm a senior, and I've been doing some help with fundraising this year. Uh, my name is Gabe Landkammer, and I'm also a senior. I've been in Youth in Action for a couple of years as well. And uh, I was working with the League of Women's Voters, which I think we're also going to talk about. And is Oliver in the background there with you guys? Oh, there he is. Hi, my name is Oliver Tapia, and this is my first year in Youth in Action. And I will be talking about why I think it is cool for underclassmen to be in Youth in Action. And then I think Prashna... Um, Prashna is here, and is Lillian here also? Yes. Oh, Prashna, Prashna, do you want to introduce yourself? Oh, there she is. Hi, I'm Prashna, and this is my first year in Youth in Action, and I'm one of the youngest in the club. And then I think is, I think Lillian might be here, and then Giselle was also going to try to attend. Um, I'm not seeing them on yet, but uh, we can, if I'm missing them, will you guys let me know? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go ahead um, and share my screen and just so they, the kids can talk and tell you a little bit about what we do. And then if anybody has questions, they can ask. So here we go. So Mia and Sam, you guys are up first. Okay, so Youth in Action is a class that promotes youth philanthropy at Essence Park High School and around our community. Uh, we educate youth through doing. We're currently working with Give Next, which is a foundation that helps youth organizations give back to their community. They accomplish this by providing funds for us or grant money for us to distribute through Larimer County. And the students within the club come up with an issue they'd like to focus on. And then we pursue it through nonprofits in our community. Okay. Our mission statement is, we want to help improve the mental and physical health of Estes Valley through youth working in the local nonprofits of Estes Valley. Through our grant making, we aim to guide the youth towards the assistance of organizations that work for the betterment of the Estes Valley community. And then our um, 
So those are kind of our main goals is again, we work really closely with a lot of the nonprofits in town. And so one of our first um, activities we did this year, Alec and Gabe, I will let you guys take the floor on this one. All right, so Gabe and I this year are working on the board of the League of Women Voters. And earlier in the semester, we helped run a voter registration drive, collaborating with them in the high school. We set up a booth kind of down in the commons one day. And during advisory, we allowed students to come down and register to vote. We ended up having a great turnout with over 50 students registering to vote in our school. And we had many more younger students express interest that they will register once they turn 16. And the League of Women Voters commented that it was one of the best turnouts they've had. So it ended up being a great success and we were able to register a lot of people in our community for future elections. Anything, Gabe? No, that's it. <laughs> Do you guys um, also, in conjunction with this and um, something that Judy Smith has helped us with for a long time, is then these seniors also went in and helped inform our students with our mock election. So that was kind of a tie in with this part. So you guys, anything else you wanna tell them about? Uh, I think that's it. Okay. okay. And then um, we have some of our younger members, Prashna, Lillianne, um, Oliver, if you guys just a little bit about um, there are underclassmen and so we're trying to build the program because we have a lot of seniors and we want to keep the program going strong. So we've been, I'll say recruiting. Sometimes I feel like we might force them a little bit, but it's okay. <laughs> so you guys are up. All right. So like I said, this is my first year in youth in action. And I at first was a little skeptical about it, but now that I have done fundraisers and food drives with the group, I feel like it's something that I could really benefit from. It lets me interact more with our community and allows for me to get better my like communicating skills with people. And I think that there's lots of more benefits that could come from doing Youth in Action. And Prashna or Lillian, do you guys, who wants to go next? Hi, I'm Prashna and um, I decided to join this club for the purpose of helping and improving the community. Um, we've been doing a lot of volunteering, hosting fundraisers and lots of other activities and they're really fun. And my hopes for the future of this club is that more students are involved in making our community a better place. And I hope that Estes Park can be a much more tight knit community with more youth being involved. And I think I saw Lillianne joined us. So Lillianne, are you there? Yes, sorry, I just That's got okay. out of swim. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, um, hi, I'm Lily. I'm currently in 10th grade. I'm one of the youngest underclassmen of Youth in Action. Um, I joined in hopes of getting involved in my community and to learn how to effectively help those in need. In the future, I hope to better understand how, like in Estes Park, we fund our organizations in order to benefit the community. I hope that Estes can become a more green and like economically type community, if that makes sense. That's one of my goals in the club to help Estes become more green. Um, thank you all for listening. And I hope that if you do have an organization, you can help us in the future. Thank you, Lillian. Um, I don't know, Giselle Escorcia was going to join us, um, and I don't see her on. Um, I don't know if she had some technical difficulties. Giselle, if I'm missing you, let me know. Um, Giselle is one of our seniors, um, and she's been working with us because she um, has been shown an interest into going into um, social work and one of our things with Youth in Action is we do um, work with groups that do help our community members sometimes with mental health. Um, so that was one of her reasons. And if she joins us in just a minute, we can add her back in. 
But Bailey, you are up next. All right. So I guess I'm Bailey. I've been using action for my entire high school career. Um, freshman year was the first time that I was involved with uh, Crossroads and uh, working as a, at the food drive. Um, every, every year since we've continued partnering with Crossroads, um, throughout this work, we hope to support those in need, especially the youth in our community. Every year, including this year, we are successfully able to fill up most of the truck up with food and paper products. And along with that, we collect donations. And every single year, it's been a really good turnout, especially this year. We, I was surprised because with how little uh, marketing that we put out and like how little people are we, I thought, I thought it was gonna be less of a turnout there was. So yeah, that's all I have to say. <laughs> well, and I will say, we talked about, this is early on in the food drive and we did fill up, the truck was almost completely full by the time we finished. And so they did do, a great job with that. And so our um, last activity that we've done this year is our first fundraiser. Well, it's not the last, it's just what we've done so far, um, was a fundraiser that we um, started with. And Alec, you are up. Uh, all right. So this year, we were looking for some fundraising ideas to help raise more money for our club. And I had an idea to do a spike ball tournament. For those of you guys who don't know what spike ball is, it's kind of a lawn, a kind of 2v2 base team lawn game. And it's really been popular at our school. So I thought we could turn that into a fundraiser and have a great time. And so over the last month, we've been playing spike ball during advisory. And we had a great turnout with over 20 teams entered and over 50 players playing throughout the course of the tournament. We were able to raise uh, $200 for our club, and it seemed like everyone had a great time doing the tournament. It was a great fundraiser, and I think you can see right there, that was our championship game. The weather got kind of bad, so we ended up playing in the gym. Everyone was super great at just handling the adversity, and we just had a ton of fun, and we're able to raise money for the club, which is what mattered in the end. So thank you. Yeah, and all of these, um, so with the with the club, the money we raise, we don't, um, it doesn't go to anything for us. It goes back into what we do at the end of the year. And Mia or Sam, did you wanna kind of end with our how we do the Shark Tank or? Yeah. Okay. Well, Shark Tank is the thing we've been doing for a couple of years now and it's like pretty much like the show Shark Tank. We have nonprofits in the community give us like their rundown and what, how much money and what they need it for and how they're gonna use it to betterment the youth in the community. And we get their like proposal, we get to go through it and see if there's anything we wanna change or have questions about. And then back and then come May, we have like, I don't know how to word it. We give them the money that they had wished to get. And this year, what's going to be um, really great is um, we have the application process is open right now, um, which we're hoping we've been trying to reach out to a lot of the nonprofits in town that um, work with youth. But because we are partnering with um, Give Next, which again supports Larimer County schools, um, we are hoping that instead of normally we have about $2,000 that we raise. This year, we're hoping that um, we will have over $5,000 that we can give back to the community and to our local nonprofits. And some of those local nonprofits that we've given to, we've given to um, the biking, wait, Sam, am I saying it right? The Cycling Coalition, is that the right way? Cycling Coalition. Um, we've worked closely with, like I said, with Judy, with the um, mock election, the junior election. We've done um, the Learning Place, has received funds from us. We have also given to Miss Kay's farm, which is one of our local teachers, and she has um, a farm with therapeutic animals. And so this year, again, we're hoping to grow the program and even give back more. And these are just a few of the students, but we have probably, do you guys think what? We have about 20, about 20 uh, members? Around 20. Yeah, so, so that's our group. Um, if any of the students did, we miss anybody or did 
you guys have anything you wanted to add or address? No? Okay. <laughs> so, so that's us. Wow. <clears throat> Thank you so much. That's amazing. What a gift to the community. And also what great leadership skills. Uh, I'm curious. So I have a daughter in eighth grade next year. She's coming, going to ninth grade next year. What would you, like, I'd love her to do something like this. What would you say to her to get her excited or involved in youth in action? I'll let the kids, um, what do you guys think? I think youth in action is a really great opportunity because we've got 20 kids in the club. So each person's really different. So there's always a person or group you can find in youth in action. And like me, I really like cycling. So through Youth in Action, I was able to work with the Cycling Coalition. So no matter what, there's something for you to do or something you can be interested in when working with Youth in Action. Cool, thanks. Thanks, it's, it's, it's a microphone. I just like to say uh, this group has uh, started pretty small and uh, several years ago. And uh, I don't know if they had a mission initially, but uh, it has really grown into a very uh, substantial part of our, our high school. And um, uh, when I came across the Give Next program with the Bohemian Foundation and another foundation that I'm on, I thought, I already have a team doing this. Uh, we can just connect these people together and, and uh, expand what we're already doing really well. And so I was really excited to make that connection. And uh, they just took it on immediately yeah. and fit right in. And it's really uh, shows the opportunity when students are doing what they need Hello. to do and, and showing leadership qualities of, of the opportunities Not that really. they can, can <laughs> get connected with. So I really appreciate their extra time and effort right. and Ms. Weaver's ability to uh, go the extra mile and, and make this happen. It, it's a lot of work outside of school. And, and I just want to say as a school district, we appreciate it. And as a community, I appreciate it. Is it great if you know of kids that are looking for opportunities to volunteer, like Sam said, we really try to work with multiple groups and get as many kids as we can involved. And so, yeah, and if you know of a nonprofit, tell them December 3rd is our deadline. We sent out emails through the SS Park Nonprofit Resource Center, but we're trying to contact people too. So send you to try to Yeah. Thank you. All right, everybody make sure that you're muted. Uh, we're hearing other people talking. Um, thank you so much, Marsha, and your students. Fantastic presentation. Any other comments or questions from other board members? I just okay. wanted to thank you all so much for the, the presentation and the information. What incredible work you're doing. And I can't wait to see how what you're learning now, especially all of you seniors, you, you take it forward and, and move that work forward as you think about your next steps, because it's such incredible, impactful work. So thank you guys for sharing it and, and doing the work. We really appreciate it. Okay, thank you for having us. Thank you, everybody. Great presentation. All right, moving on to agenda item 2.2, outgoing, outgoing board member recognition. Is that you, Sheldon? Um, yeah, I just, uh, I was going to say to my superintendent support, I think Eric was going to say a few words, but I'll, I'll go ahead and start, um, say it now. I just want to um, thank um, all three board members. Um, uh, all had a very, uh, different lengths of time on the board, but all had significant impact um, on our vision and mission and um, the goals that you have set and, and really um, making us a, a professional board and um, keeping our focus on, on the students at all time. And um, I just appreciate um, the effort and time. It, it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of uh, um, knowledge to, to learn uh, all the background and what you can and can't do. And all of you have just stepped up and been real um, uh, people that, that um, exemplify um, service to our community. And I can't think of any uh, higher service than for our students. So I just want to individually thank each and every one of you for your time and effort and also your expertise and your uh, dedication to the children and our community. So thank you. Uh, I guess I'll add on. Uh, so just my thoughts. First of all, Courtney, 
uh, you did an amazing job of jumping onto a ship already moving. Like you fit in seamlessly. It was so great to have you on the board. You really had some great insights into education, which I found really valuable. And also you had a lot of knowledge about <clears throat> education at the state level. So thanks. I feel like in a year you contributed a lot. Um, Danielle, I'm going to miss you. Uh, I feel like you did a great job of asking the tough and probing questions to really look at what we are doing and what we need to do. Uh, you took board communication to the next level and getting us, us to get out a newsletter and communicating more. You organized and held us accountable to achieving our goals. And I feel like we are able to uh, do a lot more as a board because of your leadership. So good things are happening for students because of all the work that you did. So huge thanks to you. Uh, um, and then Laura, uh, well, you got me into this mess, uh, but uh, you've been an amazing board member and especially as president. Uh, as our recent amazing growth scores show, under your leadership, we've improved student learning, which is exactly what we should be here for. Uh, you're always prepared for meetings. You're a model president. You've gotten more people involved in our school and school district. So the legacy of all you've given to the district will go on and on. So thanks, you've been a huge contribution. So thank you all. And we do have uh, some uh, things that we'd like to give to you. Uh, Heather, of course, has done an awesome job of, of uh, obtaining some, uh, some uh, small appreciations of all the work that you've done. And hopefully you remember us and, and continue your, your great work with us. So uh, we know you will not, won't go away and because you're such valuable members of the community and we will appreciate your continued uh, participations at all levels. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sheldon and Jason, for your wonderful words. And I just say that we've all been through a lot together and it's been uh, amazing work and um, pretty emotional about it. So, but thank you. It's been an amazing eight years and I've really enjoyed and cherished working with each and every one of you. And thank you. Danielle and Courtney, do you want to say anything or are you good? Uh, I would just reiterate that appreciation and that thanks. It's been such an honor to serve um, this community as a new community member, only being here coming up on two years um, to be able to, to serve the community and our students has just been one of the most um, personal and professional honors of my life. So I just so appreciate the opportunity um, to have gotten to know people and um, and to continue the, the good work for students. So thank you to Sheldon and to Jason and Eric and Laura and Danielle and all of our administrators and teachers for all of their support and, and good work for students. And I just um, just so honored to be able to say that I was a part of a part of the work. So quickly, I'm gonna miss I have enjoyed working with all of you. It's been um, a really meaningful four years and I've really enjoyed it. I learned a lot and it's been hard, but it's been the right work and it's been good work. So thank you all for, for working together as a team as we've gone through this and I'm, yeah, thanks. All right, uh, Eric hasn't joined us yet. Is he not? No. All right, Eric had an emergency, so he hopefully will be joining us at least before this meeting ends. All right, thank you everybody. Moving on to agenda item three, discussion items. Agenda item 3.1, superintendent report, Sheldon. Uh, first, I just want to give a huge um, shout out to um, all the people involved with um, protecting us with our current fire and situation, um, uh, which includes so many people, of course, our local firefighters, the National Park, Forest Service, the Lenore County Sheriff, the local police, um, everybody that's involved. I know I'm missing people, um, but um, you know, that shows how quickly things can happen and how we have to be um, on our toes and ready to go. We did um, have to miss two days of school um, because of possible, well, 1,600 people were, were evacuated and 36 was closed. Um, but uh, luckily, uh, you know, no structures was was destroyed. And I also want to give my sure condolences to our brave uh, firefighter uh, pilot that that lost his life in, in fighting our fire to protect us. Um, uh, it 
it, it hurts all of us uh, so much uh, when things like that happen. And I just want to give my condolences to him and, and, and his family. Um, uh, again, um, I also want to thank the, the school board and the principals and the staff um, all chipping in and helping us get through that morning. Uh, we didn't know exactly what was going on. Things were happening pretty quick when the fire started at seven o'clock. Um, and all the parents and their flexibility and understanding of the seriousness of the situation. Uh, these are never easy and, and hard to do in, in last minute, but uh, safety is always the number one thing that we look at and uh, trying to communicate that um, with Ms. Gooch and, and Ms. Bodie and everyone out um, the best we can. Uh, I think uh, we did a pretty good job and, uh, uh, and uh, I just wanna thank everyone for always stepping up no matter what the situation is. And we've had a lot of them, so I guess that gets us better at them, but uh, they're always difficult and they're always different. And I just wanted to thank everyone for, for getting us through that. Um, uh, I want to um, uh, remind um, everyone, we did send out a survey on how to use ESSER 3 hours, um, which we talked about at our uh, board work session and at DAC and, and several other places. Um, it has been sent to all of our parents and our students. Um, I have my student representatives working on trying to get more students involved in that. Um, uh, just try to fill that out and we'll, for the next few days and we'll try to uh, get that. We've had a lot of uh, um, interest in, in uh, feedback on it, and we're real excited about that feedback to move our steps further, which we'll be, I'll be writing that grant um, by the 15th, um, not in detail, but general narratives of where we want to go uh, with the ESSER $3 um, for the next couple years. Um, it's one-time money, but can be used over a, a couple years, so we definitely want to use it to our advantage in, in many different areas. Um, along with that, there's a lot of other opportunities right now. Um, that we're really um, trying to keep track of. There's a lot of teacher retention and teacher training programs. It's probably going to come out January 1st, run by CDE. Uh, there is a huge county um, influx of money coming in. Uh, I've been on several meetings in the last couple of weeks on what that looks. It's a significant amount of money. It has to more to do with workforce development, um, workforce housing, um, daycares, those sort of things, but I'm really pushing for those community wellness centers. I'm involved in all those as well. And um, I'm on the, I'm a chairperson of, of one of the groups for that as well. So um, it's really hard to have the capacity uh, to run all these things. And I think that I'm hoping that we are able to get someone on to run because there's so many opportunities right now to really change and transform our community and our schools and really develop some things. Um, but it's also hard to, in the short timelines, uh, be able to access some of those great opportunities. So that balance is, is something that I'm trying to do and make sure that we're not overloading ourselves, but taking advantage of the opportunities that are given towards us. Um, uh, so um, uh, again, I, I was gonna thank uh, the board members at this time, and I really appreciate the board members for all they've done, as I mentioned before, but also like to welcome the new board members. Um, uh, Mr. Davis, Ms. Kendall, and Ms. Free, uh, welcome, and we're excited to work together and keep the, the mission going, and I know all of everybody is here for our students, and I'm looking forward to going, um, working with you and, and finding out where, where we're moving next, so uh, welcome, and I uh, look forward to working with you. Um, with that, I think that's all I'll say tonight. Thank you, Sheldon. Anybody have any questions or comments for Sheldon? Because I know Aaron and John have something so exciting to tell you, so I'm not going to blow their, their thing. So. All right. Well, we're moving on to admin reports, so we'll start with them. All right. Moving into agenda item 3.2, our admin reports. Let's start with elementary school. All right. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Nice to see you. Um, I'll, I'll start off talking a little bit about things going on in elementary school with a little bit of a third, fourth, and fifth grade intermediate focus. Um, and uh, I wanted to start in particular uh, um, uh, to reiterate what Sheldon said, you know, um, with the fire uh, that happened recently, I just wanted to, to mention and, and thank uh, everyone for the resilience there. We, we, we're unfortunately getting used to, uh, used to this in our community, but every time that we have something like this come up, I'm just always so impressed with the way that our 
our staff and our families and our students are able to, to power through it. And um, we, we, you kind of lose sight of the fact that in a community our size, more so than a larger community, um, the people on the front lines are our kids' parents. And um, when something like this comes up, our kids come to school while their parents are still um, out there uh, uh, protecting our community. And, and I just wanna thank our staff, our counseling staff and all of our teachers and everyone else for coming together because it's it was definitely um the, you know the timing of it certainly brought up some, some memories as well so um just wanted to to certainly mention that and reiterate what Sheldon said there um some other happenings going on in the elementary school just wanted to, to run through um we do have uh this week we our, our um uh, visit from Colorado Department of Education is actually scheduled for uh Wednesday and Thursday of this week it was a reschedule it was actually scheduled to take place the week that uh the fire took place and so um, we rescheduled that. So that's coming up on Wednesday and Thursday of this week, um, our request to uh, reconsider visit. Um, that is, we've been working with the folks uh, uh, on that team that's gonna come out here to set up a schedule for, uh, for them to spend some time in our building. It's two days. They'll be spending their time visiting classrooms, talking with teachers, talking with staff, talking with administrators, tossing, talking with district level staff and just and visiting our classrooms and really um, um, looking for um, things, good things that are happening in our school. We've also put together a large file that, that we've shared with them of um, <clears throat> materials of things that other things that are happening in our school that support our unified improvement plan um, and all of our improvement efforts. So. That's happening on Wednesday and Thursday of this week. So that'll be, that'll be great to, to host um, uh, coming up in a couple of days. Uh, some other things happening. We, uh, we're at that point in the, in the year where we have middle of the year um, uh, assessment um, checkpoints about to, about to occur. Uh, in our school, we, we, one of the um, main middle of the year benchmarks we use is, is uh, NWA maps and then also Dibbles. And um, after Christmas break is when we will begin our middle of the year assessments. We uh, push it a lot. Sometimes we'll, we'll do it at the end of December. But this year, if you look at the calendar, the first semester is actually uh, quite a bit shorter than the second semester because of some things that were out of our control with, with the way the calendar um, uh, shaped up. So we'll be looking to get some more um, data back at the middle of the year in January and coming back to share that with the board on, on our progress there um, when we come back after uh, winter break. Um, this past, uh, some other things that have been happening, uh, um, a few, few weeks ago before Thanksgiving break, we had an elementary school professional development day where our teachers, um, were at spent, uh, spent time together throughout the entire day, learning more, um, more and more about project-based learning units and how we can continue to build strong project-based learning units. And, um, just really excited about the work preschool through fifth grade that we're doing there. Uh, those, you've heard me talk about those before, those um, are, are science and or social studies and a lot of times cross-curricular units um, that our teachers are building to, to ensure that we're including global outcomes as well as Colorado standards within those learning units. So really continue to be excited about the work we're doing there um, that we continue to build on. Um, some other things that have been happening, we, had, we hosted our elementary school accountability committee meeting on November 4th. And we had a really good turnout uh, that night. Um, it was on Zoom and we had about, um, about nine parents in attendance, which was a great turnout. Um, and we spent that time uh, in, um, in large part in some small breakout sessions, uh, getting feedback from parents about what are some things that are going well? What are some ideas that you have for us to, to improve? And then also what are some future topics you'd like to learn about at our accountability um, committee? meetings, future agenda items. And so it was a great turnout and, uh, and a um, uh, great time to connect with our families. The next elementary school accountability committee is actually meeting is gonna be on January 6th. So um, uh, we'll be sure to communicate that out to parents. Originally it was scheduled for uh, in a couple of weeks in December. It's actually because of some scheduling conflicts then bumped to January 6th. So we'll be sure to share that out with families as well. Um, also, uh, we had our DAC meeting, District Accountability Committee meeting that uh, um, we presented at um, uh, to talk, um, and that was on November 8th. And I, I presented there talking about our elementary school improvement efforts and things that are going on there. Um, and that we had a really good um, turnout of parents here as well. So um, we've had some really good engagement happening lately. Um, also, I wanted to just mention some other things that have been happening. 
uh, mark your calendar, December 16th um, at six o'clock is our uh, instrument and percussion ensemble concert at the elementary school. So stay tuned for that. That is some third, fourth and fifth graders that have been coming after school working with Mr. Maley, our music teacher. And they've been um, really, it's, it's very instrument based and percussion based. Um, I, I balked a little bit when I said the date out loud, December 16th, because it's been bumped a few times due to um, Mama Mia getting rescheduled and all these things that just are out of our control. And so, uh, but right now, December 16th at six o'clock is our plan for the percussion ensemble concert at the elementary school with our um, kids that have been doing that after school program with Mr. Maley. We also recently had uh, November 9th, we had the Creed Repertory Theater uh, perform at the elementary school for our third, fourth, and fifth graders, or no, I'm sorry, for our fourth and fifth graders. Um, and no, third, fourth, and fifth graders. And they uh, performed um, uh, uh, a bilingual um, uh, play in Sash musical called El Guayabo or The Guava Tree. And um, the Creed Repertory Theater, which is, of course is out of Creed, Colorado, they've been coming every year for quite a few years now and it's sponsored by the public library. And so that was another uh, great opportunity for us to have some uh, um, performing arts coming into our school in person uh, in our gym. And they're also great in that they provide us with an interactive study guide to support their um, program that they're presenting. And it's bilingual, which is so awesome for our kids to be a part of a bilingual performance like that. Um, and then I guess, yeah, finally, I, I wanted to just uh, mention um, Heather Leppert, um, who's not on this meeting. She is, she's been a part of the elementary school for quite some time now. She is actually in the process of moving to Denver right now. And so if you hadn't heard, Heather will be leaving the elementary school. We had a little going away. Um, thing for her after school today, um, but she's the person a lot of people interface with at the elementary school. And I think at elementary, I'm biased, of course, but I think at elementary schools in particular, you know, that that interface in the office is, is pretty critical. Um, and so we're really going to miss Heather, but we're welcoming on board a, a new person named Melissa Anderson. So Melissa started today, she'll be working on and off for the next couple of weeks as she transitions in. So if you get a new voice in the elementary school office, um, be sure to introduce yourself to Melissa there. Um, and yeah, looking forward to a strong finish, uh, a strong approach to winter break over the next three weeks. And I'm excited uh, for us to continue our progress. And um, I'll open up to questions or hand it off to Aaron or whatever we want to do there. Yeah, I'll just add on a few things. Uh, John covered most of the things at whole school, and I'm excited, like he said, about our request to consider a visit this week that we get to really show off that our UIP isn't just a something on a piece of paper that we just put in the closet and that, you know, our data isn't just a one-time thing that they can come and see the sustainability that it's really in action in our classrooms. Um, and then, you know, to add on, one of the things that came out of our ESAC meeting this December, which I'm looking forward to, is that um, parent engagement came up as a, as a piece that we really want to focus on and work on. And I'm looking forward to, I'm excited, we just learned that our RISE grant, we had an extra carryover dollars, a considerable amount from last year, um, that they just released that we can spend it on whatever we'd like and we can propose, and they really are encouraging all of us to spend it on parent engagement and uh, home-based home, home literacy supports. And so I'm looking forward to putting together a team to work on creating some plans and supporting greater parent engagement with the school and understanding, and then greater supports of making that connection between school and home together through ESAC and combining that RISE grant with that work. Um, and then the other thing I was going to share out is that one of the things we're in the process of doing uh, in the past, our preschool registration, you know, when we just had a, one small preschool classroom, it happened late in the year, right before the next school year. And with our expansion, we're shifting our preschool registration process to be opening up soon so that families can know and prepare for their preschool, for their children. And we can ensure that our classrooms are really an inclusive environment with a real mix of our um, our students who are on IEPs, our tuition pay students, and our CPP qualifying students, and that we can start getting out there and having open houses and registration starting coming up here just in a few weeks. And then um, 
the other thing I was just going to share out, because I know we talk a lot about that November 1st PD day and working on our global outcome projects, but I'm really excited because in primary, you know, but that's, I feel like where we start in our place-based learning of really understanding and uh, really looking at our home and our community and learning and then moving out from there. And our teachers have come up with some amazing ideas and collaborated to come up with great ideas of, about how we can take our place of Estes and have our five-year-olds learning and comparing life in other countries and what that means and advocating for the animals that live in our town that are special to them. And I'm really looking forward to how those are gonna transpire for our students and our community throughout the year. All right, any questions or comments for Aaron or John? Nope. Okay. I wanted to um, say thank you guys so much because being on a tech stream with a bunch of other moms um, when this fire started, um, many students were just so overwhelmed, especially our younger ones. And um, all of them went to school and, and felt reassured and um, listened to and heard. And so I think that speaks volumes to, to all the teachers and certainly to, to the two of you, um, knowing that they've gone through so much already. Um, that certainly stirred up so much emotion. And I heard both of you talk about that and just that awareness was, was key. And so our, my little mom group was very much like, no, they went to school and they all felt better. So I just wanted to say thank you all so much for, for continuing to support our students' um, mental health just as much as their academic growth and achievement. So thank you all for making that a priority. And I will be thinking of you on Wednesday and Thursday during that darn CDE visit. <laughs> I hope they send some good folks out, but I'll be thinking of you guys. I'm so excited about, um, about showing off all the great work that you're doing. So I'll be thinking about you guys. Thanks. All right, any other comments from board members? I just want to say a little bit about the, the visit. I think, um, you know, sometimes, you know, we put this visit on, it's all or nothing, or we're going to meet the guideline or not meet the guideline. Um, I think we have great things to present. Um, they have their own things like participation, which we cannot control. And I don't know what that will come around being. But the bottom line is that we're in this position. We can show what we're doing. We'll get great feedback. This is a great process for our team and for us and an opportunity for us to grow and learn. And, and I'm just uh, really appreciate um, uh, Mr. Brian and, and Ms. Ms. Miller and Ms. Bodie and all the teachers for putting us in this situation um, that we can really get a look at of what we're doing and doing well and going with that. Um, and, um, and whatever the results are, um, like I say, there's a lot of different criteria that we have no control over. Um, I'm really proud of what we've done and, and, and I think that we're gonna have, to have a great showing. So I appreciate all everybody's work on that. So thank you. All right, any other questions or comments? Okay, thank you. Great presentation. Moving on to the middle school. Janet. Great. Hi, Laura. Hi. Um, I'll just reiterate what John and Sheldon said, the response when the fire hit that morning. Um, I, I pulled into the parking lot and one of my teachers said, I might be late to bus duty. And I said, are you okay? And she just sent me a picture from her deck of the fire. And I'm like, I think you shouldn't come to school. So um, it just came so quickly. We only ended up with about 30 kids at the middle school, but the staff just jumped in. They were out front and having kids stay in the car with their parents and they went to the bus loop and we didn't have any power for a while, but we kind of just rolled with it. So I was really appreciative of everybody at the middle school that was there and really helped out and kept kids calm. So um, we had our MSAC meeting the first week of November. We used that time just to share out the CMAS data and then the NWEA results, the same materials that had been, uh, results that had been shared out at the school board meeting, but we did that in a smaller environment. Um, only three weeks left in this quarter. So our motto at the middle school is finish strong, um, trying to get as many supports in place for kids um, that are struggling so that they can be successful these last few weeks of the quarter. Um, supports come at the middle school. We do what's called a student success meeting. It's also known as MTSS. We have changed the format almost every year, I think in my years I've been there, but I, I think we have found what's working. Um, we're holding student success meetings every other week in the grade level PLC. And those 
core teachers are bringing concerns to the group. Um, the meeting is run by our counselor, Sam Becker. She's doing a really great job. She's gotten us pretty organized with tracking interventions, what supports her in place, what's working. She drives that meeting really well. Um, the student success addresses academic and social emotional concerns of our students. We've really modeled it after elementary. Elementary has a really strong MTSS process in place. So I've taken what I've learned from elementary and we've put it in place at middle school. I think it's, it's working out really well. Um, we have a number of staff that are involved, core teachers, elective teachers, the ELD teacher, special ed teacher, the school psychologist when necessary, our district social worker when necessary. And then um, Sonia Greenway has taken on restorative practices and she is involved when it's anything around any kind of discipline issue. And also the nurse, um, Caitlin, who I can't say enough about, she's been awesome, but she's also attended meetings if there's any medical issues also going on with that student. So um, we use that time to track effectiveness of the supports we have in place for students. Um, as a team, then we decide if that if the data shows that support is working, we'll keep it in place. Do we need to add more support or is there a different support that would work for that student? So um, we're just getting we're getting better and better at it. And it's also nice. We we have a few more options for interventions at the middle school this year um, than we have had in the past with some one on one reading intervention. And then the tutors that we're using for the learning place is, are, are really providing tutoring. And I talked about that at the last meeting. So I just want to give a brief overview of our, our MTSS process at the middle school. Um, our PLCs have started instructional rounds, and that is something at the middle school we've talked and talked about, and then we never find time. So I just created the PLC agendas for like the next eight weeks, and we just scheduled it. And I think that's what they needed. I think staff, the teachers needed the permission to leave the PLC room, not sit and do work and go. And they are visiting classrooms. Um, some went as a whole PLC, others divide, divided up, and they decided, I'll go watch this person, I'll go watch this person, we'll bring back the information. Um, Sonia created a really awesome Google Doc where they could capture any of their takeaways from what they've seen, and then that was shared with all the staff. Um, I, I think it's just been really awesome for we get in that classroom sometimes and that's that's where we live and we hear about things other people are doing but it was so great to have people have the chance to see what their colleagues are doing in a different grade level in a different content area so we're excited to continue that and hope to expand it a couple like the math team was like do you think next time we could visit a high school classroom and so we're going to try to expand um, that a little bit next time. Our last staff meeting, I just wanted to give a shout out to both Sam Becker and Courtney Carroll. So that's the middle school counselor and our social worker. They both got trained as trainers for this QPR, which is a suicide prevention program. Um, middle school did have that training. Our goal in the district is to have everybody who's face forward, facing forward with kids take this training. We had like 27 of us at the middle school training. It's kind of a sensitive topic, it can be emotional for some people, but Sam and Courtney did a great, great job with, us, with it. And they're considering now us gatekeepers is what we learned. And as gatekeepers, what our job is, is to recognize warning signs of suicide, how to offer hope, um, and then really most importantly, how to get help. So it was a great training. I know high school just did theirs today. Um, so I'm just excited our district has taken that on and really that Sam and Courtney were willing to become trainers for that program. So we didn't have to, you know, all go somewhere else or bring someone in from somewhere else that we were able to do that in-house. It's a really great training. Um, band and choir concerts coming up. Choir is Wednesday night. Um, some of you have kids that are singing and then the band concert will be Wednesday, December 15th. So we're excited about that, especially because we went that whole year with without any performances. So we're, we're excited to be back on the stage. Um, an update on athletics. This week ends the regular season for boys basketball games. Um, we actually have Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday games. We have a home game Thursday, if anybody's interested in coming. I wanna give a huge shout out to the coach that we hired. His name is Glenn Mays. 
Um, because Glenn is the only coach we were able to find, he was willing to take on both the seventh grade and the eighth grade teams. And he's done just a fantastic job. I'm really lucky to have found him. And Joe Fry has been helping out with some coverage, um, some away game coverage as an admin on duty and actually just got his small vehicle license and is going to help us drive to some of the tournament play. Tournament play begins this Saturday is our B tournament. And then the next week we go into A tournament. We've had sign up for wrestling and girls basketball. Both those will start January 4th. If we can find a girls basketball coach, um, the wrestling had 38 athletes sign up. So um, a few years back, we were having six and seven and eight wrestlers. So big shout out to Matt Seiler. Our eighth grade language arts teacher is also the wrestling coach. And he's just really turned that program around and gotten kids super excited about wrestling. I also want to thank John and Aaron Be because we have so many wrestlers. Um, we usually wrestle on the middle school stage. And if you've ever seen that, you'd know why we can't have 38 kids wrestling on the stage. So um, elementary is offered that we can come and use their gym every day after school. So we want to thank you because otherwise we would have had to been making cuts or doing something with 38 wrestlers. So, and then girls basketball, we have currently 23 girls have signed up for basketball, either seventh or eighth grade. So lots, lots happening at the middle school. Anybody have any questions? It's good in the middle. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Janet. Thank you. All right. Moving on to administrator report for the high school. Mary Barron. Hi, everyone. Um, Kevin Miles is here with me as well. So he'll be talking about sports in a moment, but I'll go over a few, a few things at the high school. Um, can't reiterate enough about the fire. Just thank you for the response from everybody. Um, our teachers, um, our, our Sheldon, Ruby, the firefighters, everybody, thank you. It was a, quite a morning and um, we got through it and um, just can't say enough about that. So thank you. Um, I want to talk a little bit about before break, we had our high school held our NHS, our National Honor Society induction ceremony for this year's inductees. And it was a really fun um, hour of hearing about the strong character, the leadership and the, the role modeling of these students and what they provide to our high school. Um, really fun to hear about each one of those students and the things that they're involved in inside and outside of our school. Um, National Honor Society, a great program and going strong with us here at the high school. Um, Janet talked a little bit about um, the suicide prevention intervention training. We did go through that as a staff today at the high school, focusing on our mental health um, support for students as well. It was an excellent training. Thank you to Sam Becker and Courtney Carroll for that. Um, really important topic, especially this time of the year. And um, we're committed at the high school to continue working hard um, to meet the needs of our students in, in social emotional manner um, as well. We um, we are also knowing that there's three weeks left, just really trying to get to the finish line of semester one in a strong way. Uh, our teachers are doing a great job of meeting with kids um, when they need to be met with. They use advisory time at the end of the day. We also, um, one of our wonderful counselors, Stephanie Mabry, um, helped to put to, into place what we call power hour, which is Monday through Thursday after school from 3.30 to 4.30 for any student that is wanting extra support um, to get grades up or just focusing on whatever topics they need. Um, lots of our teachers are showing up to help after school. It's been a really successful program that we hope to continue for the whole year, most likely. Um, but right now it's just been a great way to help some of those struggling students and their grades and getting to the end of the semester. So our counselors are working hard to get uh, make sure kids' schedules are ready to go. Um, lots and lots going on with that. We have a group of about 25 students who are involved um, in a series of Monday night uh, sessions at the University of Colorado Anschutz Medical Campus. The program is called HOPE, which is Health Occupations Promoting Equity. 
It's a career, um, it's a health career exploration program, and it's especially encouraging of students who are traditionally underrepresented in, um, unrepresented in medical careers. Um, so it's been a really uh, a cool series at this point. We're heading into our third one, um, and our ELD teacher, Lori Brown, has been the one taking the kids, Cinda Bash, our awesome librarian, and um, she also helps teach our, our HOSA classes, our health occupation classes have been involved in that. And we are just really um, seeing some neat things. The kids are getting, they've done types of topics uh, such as epidemiology, health equity, nutrition, things like that. So um, something that will continue uh, for, I think it ends in March. So it's it's Monday nights, um, not every Monday, but every uh, it's a schedule for Monday nights. So that's something that's going on. We um, also have a new hire. We hired a new bookkeeper at the high school, bookkeeper and principal secretary. Uh, her name's Emily Harris. We are um, excited to have her. We lost Julie uh, Cooney Fisher, who was with us for a long time, who we just loved as well. So we're um, our new person is getting acquainted and um, learning with Kevin and I as we continue to work together and um, really have enjoyed having her there. Um, we also have choir concerts this Wednesday night and we have Mama Mia coming up as well on December 9th, 10th and 11th at 7 p.m. If anybody's interested in coming, it's going to be great. We know that. Um, and so thank you. I also want to just say thank you to the outgoing board members and welcome to the uh, the incoming board members. We look forward to working with you. And I'd like to turn it over to Kevin Miles to give an update on our athletics, please. All right. Thanks, Mary. Um, so we wrapped up our first season um, and everything with cross country uh, boys uh, taking ninth at state uh, this year. Our soccer team qualified for state playoffs. They lost to the defending champs two to nothing. Um, so gave them a heck of a run. Our band kids took second at state um, and everything. So congratulations to all those teams. And we were able to give them all a little send off um, during the school. So it was kind of cool to see the school spirit out there um, and everything. So uh, winter season starting tomorrow, boys basketball. We have 24 kids out, girls basketball. Unfortunately, right now we only have seven. We're still working on a couple. Um, so we will only have a varsity girls basketball. Wrestling, we have 13 to 15 kids out. And girls swim, we have eight swimmers and five dimer, divers um, out at this time. Um, tomorrow, our boys and girls basketballs travel to Gilpin um, and they will play. Wrestling, they are headed out to West Central. And swimming will have their first meet on Saturday. Um, so probably the big thing that we're stepping up to next is December 17th. It's called the foundation game. Um, it's an extra game through Chassa that we're putting on. This game will be in remembrance of Jason Reitz, um, our um, previous basketball coach that passed away, unfortunately. Um, so what we're doing is we're going to do a chili supper um, and um, the basketball game on December 17th with boys and girls, and it's going to be with Valley High School. Um, all the proceeds from the Chili Supper and the entry fee donations will go into a scholarship fund um, to one boy and one girl um, for the high school um, and everything. And we're hoping to continue this tradition as we go along um, and everything. But um, I do have a flyer. I'll get that sent out to you guys. I have some kids. They're going to get the flyers out to um, some of the businesses and, and try to get as much um, as many people in the community as we can to be there and support um, um, not only the kids, but uh, to remember Jason um, and everything. So, um, but we will have that and that's December 17th, that last Friday as we walk out of campus. So that is it for sports and uh, everything. So thank you for your time. All right, any board members have any questions for Mary or Kevin at this time? No? All right, well, thank you for a great, great reports. Um, moving on, is Laszlo here to give a report, Sheldon? I didn't see his name. No, he did his quarterly report last time, so he didn't do it this okay. time. Yeah. That's right, okay, thank you. All right, moving on to agenda item 3.3, .3, board reports. Any board members have any reports? I have two. 
Uh, the first one is I was at the workman's comp meeting. Um, all is good with workman's comp. We actually saved money last year. Uh, while remote learning is not best for student learning, it is very good for workman's comp. Uh, so we saved a bunch of money. Uh, and SPARC had some good years, so let's just stay safe. And our fees have been lower because we've been so good. And also, I was reelected vice president of that board. So, yay. Um, also, I went to the MSAC meeting, and as Janet said, they went over the data, but we really dove deep in the middle school, and they're doing really good, so that really came out. Great growth across the board. Uh, reading scores are good. Math scores are good, except for eighth grade math, and they had a teacher switch halfway through the year, um, and their science scores are just incredible. So props to the middle school and a good MSAC meeting. So that's it for me. All right, thank you, Jason. I don't think anybody else had any reports. I just will please say that we have PDAC last week, but it was canceled due to the fire cancellations. So nothing to report there. All right. <laughs> and I had my last CBOCES meeting. So uh, whoever's gonna pick up that <laughs> for me with the new board. All right. Moving on to agenda item 3.4, student representative report, Chloe Coop. Is no. Chloe here? There's yeah, me. sorry, it like did not work. Okay, um, so we don't really have a, a lot. Um, Amelia and Sophie aren't here right now, but what we did wanna do was at the end of um, the semester. Well, like <laughs> during winter break, what we were gonna do is we were gonna make like a little Google Sheets form for all the students to fill out about like their equity grade grading. And we want to give this to them in like January once they have all their grades so they can like really like tell us how they feel about it and do that. And then do like another one at the end of the semester or at the end of the year. Um, that's kind of like all we have at the moment. Um, yeah. All right, any questions or comments for Chloe? No? All right, thank you, Chloe. Moving on to agenda item four, consent agenda. Is there anything that the board would like to pull from the consent agenda for discussion prior to approval? No, nope. seeing none, I'll take a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Would the board member like to second that? I'll second. All right, Heather, roll call, please. Mr. Adams? Aye. Mrs. Cabrera? Aye. Mrs. Case? Aye. Mr. Kushner? Aye. Mrs. Wolf? Aye. The ayes carry the vote and the consent agenda is approved. Moving on to agenda item five, action items. We do not have any action items at this time. Moving on to agenda item six, our upcoming meetings. Looks like we have a CASB convention December 1st through the 4th. And our next regular session is December 13th. Any questions about our upcoming agenda? Moving on to agenda item seven, other. Do board members have anything other to say? Uh, yes, Laura, I want to address the outgoing board uh, and board members. Uh, Courtney, uh, <clears throat> we didn't get to work together for too long, uh, but I was always impressed with your professionalism, your uh, experience. They were from being a teacher uh, in the classroom to working uh, for CDE. Um, always impressed by what you brought to the table and I appreciate your time. Can't be easy to be a teacher in another district, commuting uh, and balancing all that. And uh, uh, I appreciate uh, your time and efforts there so much. Danielle, uh, thank you for always keeping that firm and steady hand on uh, keeping us to task on our goals and uh, our projects and what we had coming up and uh, holding our feet to the fire. Uh, you did that so well. <laughs> and uh, again, the same, it cannot be easy to uh, have uh, toddlers. It's been a while since I had one, but I do remember the days. And to keep that balance uh, with you uh, working with uh, uh, Dave um, and our fire chief and keeping the balance between all that to make sure that you are always here uh, Thank you so much. Um, uh, from those that first day of uh, meeting you at the uh, 
NLC uh, and and uh, putting out the global outcomes and getting feedback to seeing you uh, step forward and, and get more involved in the school district. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, and Laura, it's been eight years and you're term limited now and stepping down. Uh, your enthusiasm that has started from day one and uh, uh, you've gone all the way through today. Uh, be involved in the district, uh, stepping into um, uh, being a delegate uh, to CASB, to being a board member at CASB. Uh, all the times you took people down to the uh, Capitol to get involved in legislation and uh, giving tours and uh, keeping that as a continual role and always in the front. I appreciate it. Uh, we didn't, we don't always have the same styles. Uh, and uh, I learned so much from you and what you were doing and how you did it. And uh, thank you so much. I appreciate your time as uh, the board president and uh, help keeping that enthusiasm going uh, on a nonstop roll. Thank you so much. I uh, appreciate again your time and effort and uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Eric. And um, also I, I've got another other also uh, for the three of us that are leaving, a big shout out and for the other two board members too, a big shout out to our families and our partners. Um, being a board member takes a lot out of you. It's a lot of time, it's a lot of energy, it's a lot of emotion, it's a lot of dedication. And you know, I guess this goes for our whole staff too, our, our very, very supportive partners at home um, that have helped us all through this. Um, my Glenn has been my rock through all this and uh, I just huge shout out. He's downstairs with all the kids and animals right now. <laughs> so I can have a quiet meeting, but you know, just for the last eight years, he's been my rock. So that's, that means a lot to me and for all of you and your partners. Um, thank you. And that's all I've got. Any other others? No. All right. I can uh, uh, tell you what we're going to do um, after. I mean, once you adjourn, it's usually when we go out and have cake and thank you in, in person, but I hope you all have leftover pie and we could take about 10 minutes and we'll reconvene at 730 with our reorganization meeting with the new board members. Um, so uh, once we adjourn, so I just wanted to get that out. So thank you. And all I right. will be dropping off a little something for each one of you. Uh, uh, weird times and we can't do it right now, but I have something else prepared. So. Uh, thank you, Eric. <laughs> and I do have a beer prepared for myself. I don't know about anybody else. I don't know about pie, but I do have beer. Um, moving on to uh, agenda item eight, adjournment. Would a board member like to make, in, make a motion to end this regular meeting tonight? So moved. All right, this meeting's over. Thank you, everybody. Over and out. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, again, I think, I think it's only eight minutes, but if we could meet at 7.30, um, stay on. You can stay on and just... Uh, I'm mute and we'll be back and we'll start the meeting at 7.30 if that's okay with everybody. Is that okay, Mr. Adams, Vice President Adams? Yes, thank you. Yeah. All right, good night, everybody.